Um, hi, I'm Zoe McMullen. I'm a junior here. Hi, I'm Kennedy Russell. I'm a junior as well. Um, okay, and today me and Kennedy are just going to be giving some like, um, some brief basic background about HBCUs and people that attend there. Okay. So what is the HBCU and how did they come to be? So HBCU stands for Historically Black Colleges and Universities. Um, HBCUs were originally established to serve the educational needs of black Americans. Prior to the time of their establishment and for many years afterwards, black people were generally denied admission to tra traditionally white institutions. So those are your PWIs. Um, the first ever HBCU was established by Richard Humphreys in 1837 in Pennsylvania. It was first called the African Institute and is now known as Cheney University. HBCUs were originally made to teach African Americans skills for gainful employment. Um, most HBCUs originated from 1865 to 1900, the greatest number of HBCUs um, being started in 1867, two years after the Emancipation Proclamation. Um, these are just some basic HBCU stats. So HBCUs represent less than 3% of colleges and universities in America. Um, black enrollment at HBCUs has increased by 17% between 1976 and 2018. There are 101 HBCUs located in 19 states in America. HBCUs produce 23% of all African American students. They enroll 12% of all African American students. Um, they educate 50% of African-American teachers, 40% of African-American health professionals, 50% of lawyers, 80% of judges, 40% of engineers, and 12.5% of CEOs. Okay, so here are some of the top seven HBCUs. The first school is Spelman College, uh, which is located in Atlanta, Georgia. It's a private institution and it was founded in 1881. Some of the um, most popular like majors at Spelman is psychology, biological science, political science and government. Spelman is also the oldest HBCU for women in the country. Um, some famous alumni from Spelman is Alberta Williams King and Alice Walker. The next school is Howard University. Howard University um, is located in Washington, D.C. Um, it was founded in 1867. And Howard University is a leader in the STEM fields. The National Science Foundation has ranked Howard as the top pr producer of African-American engineering doctoral degrees. The university also boasts nationally ranked programs such as social work, business, and communication sciences and disorders. Some notable um, alumni are Chadwick Boseman and Taraji P. Henson. The next one is Xavier University, which was founded, oh, it's located in New Orleans, Louisiana, and it was founded in 1915. Um, despite its relatively small size, which is about 3,000 to 300 students, um, um, Xavier is the national, is nationally recognized leader in the STEM and health sciences fields it produ um, producing more African-American students who graduate from medical, medical school each year than any other university in the United States. Some, um, some famous alumni from Xavier is Aaron Henry, Nathaniel Clifton, and Alexis Henry. Um, also, my parents went to Xavier University as well. Uh, the next school is Tuskegee University, which is located in Tuskegee, Alabama, and it was founded in 1881. Tuskegee is the originator and producer of the famous Tuskegee Airmen and the partnership with the U.S. Army um, Air Corps. Some notable alumni are Nathaniel Ritchie, Roosevelt Williams, and Alice Coachman. The next college is Morehouse College, which is located in Atlanta, Georgia. It was founded in um, 1867. Um, uh, Morehouse is one of the only three all-male liberal arts colleges in the country. The school began as the Augusta Theological Institution in the basement of Springfield Baptist Church, 
Springfield Baptist Church is the oldest church in the United States, dating back to 1787. It has a reputation for providing an academic foundation for black men. The university attracts well-known achievers in politics and the arts to speak at the college events. Some famous alumni is Martin Luther King, Samuel L. Jackson, and Spike Lee. The next school is Florida A&M University, which was founded in 1887. Florida Agricultural and Mechanical University was founded as the state normal college for colored students. In October, and on October 3rd, 1887, it began classes with only 15 students and two instructors. Some notable alumni are um, Athea Gibson um, and Robert Hayes. Um, the last college, but, uh, but not least, is Hampton University, and it's located in Hampton, Virginia. It was founded in 1868, and it was originally um, founded to educate freed men after the Civil War. Hampton consistently ranks in the top five HBCUs in the country. Some notable alumni is Booker T. Washington, Wanda Sykes, and Alberta Williams King. Um, these are just some other notable alumni that um, have gone to HBCUs. Um, a lot of these I'm sure you might recognize. Um, Oprah Winfrey, who went to Tennessee State. Langston Hugh, which um, he's a writer. Um, I don't know if we still teach this book at university. I've read it when I was like a freshman. It was Raisin in the Sun. Um, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., of course, from Morehouse, as Kennedy said. Alice Walker from Spelman, Stephen A. Smith from Winston-Salem State. If you watch ESPN, you would know Stephen A. Smith. He is a, what would you call it? An, an announcer, commentator. commentator. Thank you so much. <laughs> um, Booker T. Washington from Hampton, Chadwick Bozeman from Howard, Anthony Anderson from Howard. Also, he's um, on Blackish. Um, Taraji P. Henson, also from Howard. She's a pretty recognizable actress. Um, few movies, really popular for Empire. Okay, so. I'm sorry. Okay, so my name is Sydney. My name is Curry. And this is the HBCU Homecoming, a tradition unmatched. So I'm going to do like a brief explanation of like H HBCU experiences. So the HBCU experience is just incredible. You have the ability to be around people who look just like you. You get to see the real definition of true uncut black excellence. And you are continuing the legacy of all successful black people before you, such as Taraji B. Henson, Oprah Winfrey, Samuel L. Jackson, Felicia Rashad, to uh, Toni Morrison, and you're paving the way for future black excellence while ensuring that your black brothers and sisters have the ability to have a higher education. HBCUs are seen as safe spaces for black people, and you have this sense of belonging and empowerment. But, sorry, it looks a little empty and unorganized like the U.S. government, but mine on my computer has more stuff on it. But anyways, um, HBCU Homecoming started as just, um, just celebrating, you know, the football game. Um, they wanted to have, like, a lot of school spirit, and they invited alumni to come back and network and talk to their um, comrades. But then it transformed into, like, a week-long cultural celebration that the student body and alumni take very seriously. Um, people that don't even go to the HBCU sometimes come to the homecoming. And, like, I know, like, especially the Howard homecoming is, like, the most popular one. Like, um, I know a lot of people, most people who go to the homecoming are probably not even from Howard. <laughs> um, yeah, but um, it's so taken so seriously that like classes are canceled for a week, so it's a chance for students to just um, relax and have fun. 
and it's like um, HBCU school spirit is very strong um, because we li get to live in a we get to live in a country that our ancestors fought for us to have more access to education resources and freedom that they were denied. So it's like being able to be around um, all, all black people like for a week is just empowering. And you can go to the next one. Um, the Divine Nine is the group of nine soror sororities, black sororities and fraternities. Um, go ahead to the next one, quick. To get up out my house, I had to leave, I'm gone, yeah. Had to go out on my own, I had to show I'm gone, yeah. Had to pay for all of this, I had to take a loan, but how it's homecoming made me feel I came home. Parties turning up in doors, and the laundry room. Homecoming cook out like a family reunion. Tuskegee football games, then my guest stay popping. Forget the game, man, ain't nobody watching. Southern Grambling by you, classic band, stay rockin'. Dance line, groovin' to the music, movin', choppin'. Don't you wanna go to a place in your life where everyone around you look just like you? Stars around, shining bright, surrounded by black, or you wanna stay slicey? You don't need a spaceship to go to a different world. It feels like home, but this is a different world where your skin fits in and everyone is different. You don't have to fit a type, you don't have to be a token. You're not defined by preconceived notion. Love your life, drink your potion. You can be who you want to be in this place safe from the hierarchy of race. Black folks from around the world in one location. Vacation to Western Salem and Prairie View, Langston Dillon and TSU, Wiley College and VSU Lane and Cheney and Fam. You hey, Parker, Talladega, Tougaloo, and Alabama State, Jackson and Delaware State, North Carolina, A&T, Bethune, Cookman, learn to teach, Wilbur Force, plus 86 more. Me, Diddy, Oprah, we're chilling on a yacht. They say black college helped them get the money that they got. They said, I had the time of my life at an HBC. I love my H in front of my B, my B in front of my C. I love my HBC. You and I do, I do, Ooh. It's like top of my list. Ah, oh wow. All right, so that's just um, a sh like a little introductory video to the next slide. Uh oh. Sorry. Okay, so Black Greek organizations are part of the National Panhellenic Council, which was founded in 1930 at Howard University to unite all Black Greeks to fight for equity and combat racial isolation on campus and beyond. Um, before the council was formed, um, black people were banned and ostracized from joining white Greek organizations and in some cases weren't even allowed within 1,000 yards of white Greek houses. And so black people, of course, had to create their own um, Greek organizations. Naturally, we founded our own, drenched it with our culture to create strong, intimate sisterhoods and brotherhoods that stand on the values of community service and academic achievement. Um, so the sensational sororities are Alpha Kappa Alpha, Kappa Alpha Sorority, founded in 19, 1908 at Howard University. Um, Delta Sigma Theta Sorority, founded in 1913, also at Howard. Zeta Phi Beta, founded at Howard as well. And then Sigma Gamma Rho, which was actually founded in 1922 at Butler University. <laughs> um, so yeah, my mom is a Sigma Gamma Rho and Sydney's mom is an Alpha Kappa Alpha. So we are very, we know the culture. And um, the fantastic fraternities are Alpha Phi Alpha, which was founded in 1906 at Cornell University. So it was the first of all of them 
it was the first um, black Greek organization and then Alpha Kappa Alpha was the first sorority. And so then there's Alpha, or there's Kappa Alpha Psi founded at Indiana University. And so a lot of people will say that like the Sigma Gamma Rose and the Kappa Alpha Psi's are like brother and sister fraternity since we were both founded in Indiana. And then there's Omega Psi Phi founded at Howard, Phi Beta Sigma also founded at Howard. And then Iota Phi Theta, which is founded at Morgan State University. Um, something special different about black Greek memberships is that they last a lifetime. Um, most Greek memberships don't really continue after graduation. People um, tend to just leave that in, in their college experience. But for black Greeks, it's forever, even if you're not financial, meaning like you're not paying um, the yearly dues, like you have that bond with everyone forever. And if you see somebody um, in public and they're wearing something that's a part of your sorority, you're gonna say hi, you're gonna talk to them because like, it's like having a long lost sister, a long lost brother. And also something I like to mention is that um, for people who are non-binary, I heard that if, even if they are in a sorority or fraternity, they still use like sister and brother. So I just thought that was interesting. Um, we can go to the next one. So how to spot a black sorority or fraternity, not hard. Most of them, they have the bumper stickers, they got the license plate, the, all the, um, all the stuff. And then I know a lot of people even will have like a shrine. I don't know if that's the word for it, like a shrine. shrine. And they'll have the, like a frame with all this stuff. And they'll have a room dedicated to their sorority or fraternity. It's crazy, but it's also cool. <laughs> and so, um, yeah, everyone has their sig signature colors. They'll have hand signs, um, Greek letters, there's chants, strolls, songs that they will, and steps that they'll do at like, homecomings or they'll have yard shows and all that, which we'll learn about a little bit later. And then just by your aura, like sometimes you can just tell if somebody's in a sorority or fraternity, even if they don't have their stuff on. Um, so yeah, sororities and fraternities are basically like gangs that are, that are devoted to the community and education and they charge yearly fees. Um, so yeah, and then to, I know, for like most white Greeks or like other Greek organizations, they say like, oh, sister, brother. But for black Greek organizations, they say soror or frat. So then there's that. So um, little sister and brother organizations, this will depend on like where you live. But in Indiana, we have um, Archinets, it's for the Zetas, Kappa League for the Kappas, the Roar Club, I'm the president of the Alpha Sigma chapter in Indiana for the Sigma Gamma Rose. And then they have like debutant cotillion for the AKAs and Sydney won first runner up for last year. And so um, yeah, so there's ways for younger people to get involved in that beforehand. And then like in, at the bottom in the middle, I just have a little picture. It's like a, it's an AKA and a Omega and they're, they have their kid and she's like future AKA because a lot of people do take this sorority seriously. They're like, I'm an AKA, you're gonna be AKA. And that's just how it is. Um, now for Sydney. Okay, yeah, no, AKA is, is, all the sororities are just like, they're so serious. When I was little, my mom had me in like, um, the, um, the AKA, like little onesies. I was like, ma'am, you need to chill. But, so Stomp, <laughs> Stomp the Yard. Okay, so this, it, it is a, it's a movie about like where two rival fraternities are like stepping against each other. So um, in reality, it's just when like the sororities and fraternities like get onto the yard and they step, it's like a sign of respect and to show like who they are on campus. So stepping is no joke. So stepping is a form of art and is performed to show unity, black excellence, love, and pride for their black heritage. Stepping dates back to Africa and it was shaped by the African gumboot gum dance. Stepping has become an integral part in black history. Stepping consists of stylized movements, precision, calls, and chants. So stepping was popularized by sororities and fraternities, and it was, but it was not like created by them. So stepping is a historical form of communication and storytelling. These steps serve as a sort of code for um, African Americans to tell their story, um, since speaking out was oftentimes too dangerous, and now it has grown and evolved. 
And now we are going to show you a little, um, little surprise. We're gonna do a little step. I know you guys are nervous, but we're gonna do so good. Am I talking? Am I, talk, am I talking something like that? No. Oh, okay. Why are we so over the Yeah. Oh, there we go. Okay, so I'm, I'm just going to do the one and then I'll catch you guys then, okay? All right. talking okay so thank you for watching our presentation um happy last day of black history month and also we are selling these hoodies or come closer these hoodies and shirts yeah oh <laughs> oh wow Okay, yeah, it has Angela Davis as BLM. Um, it's just for a little affinity fundraiser, and this one says it's a movement on a moment, and it has the Black Lives Matter on the back, face on the back. So if you want to, we also have another one, but if, so if you want to support us, go ahead and buy a shirt or a hoodie. So this whole presentation basically represents the movie we're gonna watch, which is Drumline, so please watch that. And we'll be doing a little Q&A at the end. Thank you guys. <laughs>